study design. This is the most important thing for research methodology. And if I'm not wrong, maybe there is two questions possible with this. Okay, but depending on whoever is making the, but this is very important topic for the biostatistics, okay, study design. Under study design only, we are able to understand that, okay, uh, we are going to conduct a clinical trial or we are going to conduct a observational study okay and we will discuss in a very way in a very layman way so that it's easy for you to remember the things also so when when we we are thinking like which study design is more appropriate for my objective or my study whatever i'm planning so the first question you ask with yourself and the question is is I'm going to give some intervention or not? Very simple question. Okay. And then it's it become very easy for you to remember the complete study design. Okay. Question by question. Okay. You ask the question with yourself and try to find out the solution from yourself. Okay. So if you will ask with your question, I'm going to give some intervention or not. So if you are not going to give some intervention, means what? You are going to observe only. Okay. So that is called observational study. And if you are going to give some intervention, intervention is not only like uh, a, a, a medicine. Okay. It may be anything. Like if you make some dietary plan, that is also intervention. If you make some uh, uh, educational plan that is also an intervention so intervention is not just the uh, like okay I have some medicine and I am going to give this medicine and that is the my intervention okay are you are, are you uh, involved to uh, you are interested to see the effect of some vaccine it's not only like that okay intervention is anything so if you are going to give some intervention or not, that is the most important thing. Ask with yourself. If it's not an intervention, I'm not going to give something to the patient, then you are going to just observe that thing. So observational study, experimental study. Now, if you are going to observe, <clears throat> then if you are going to observe, then the second question is, are you going to compare something or you are just going to observe something? For example, what is the hemoglobin label in pregnant woman? I'm just interested to know the estimate of the hemoglobin label in pregnant woman. Or uh, next possibility is what is the prevalence of the psychiatric label in working women or working males? So I'm interested only to see the proportion of the psychiatric problem okay i am not interested in uh, to compare with something else i am just interested to see the existence the proportion the estimate of that problem okay so if you are interested only <clears throat> on the estimate of something only one variable involved not comparison then this is descriptive. You are just going to describe that. Okay. Like what is the hemoglobin label in pregnant women or in hemoglobin label in women. But then no, no. <clears throat> my objective is not just to, come, uh, to uh, pro provide the estimate of something. My interest is to see the relationship between the two variables. Means you are going to compare something. Like the hemoglobin label in pregnant women and non-pregnant women. The psychiatric condition of the working and non-working woman then in that case <clears throat> or is the tobacco is associated with the cancer okay so you have two variables you want to see the relationship between them or you can say compare okay so if you want to compare the two group then we'll say analytical okay from the word by the name also it is clear that what is that okay so it's not very difficult for you to understand and when you got the question just 
ask the question from yourself in this way. So it's very become easy for you. Okay, which study design basically it is involved. Okay, and that will help also when you are uh, really be the part of the PhD and then you are planning for your objective. Okay, and study design. <clears throat> so now if you are interested to compare something, then this is analytical. Now, if you are interested to compare something, it means there are two things. In, in statistical scenario, we will say this as exposure and the disease. So one is the exposure, one is the disease. So when you are going to collect which information, okay, like uh, the exposure you are going to collect first, the disease information you are going to collect first, both you are going to collect together. Depending on the directionality, we again divide the analytical study into the three subcategories or three sections. Okay. And again, if I will ask with yourself, you have two variables, disease and exposure, how many possibility of collecting the two variables in a different way? So there is only three possibilities. One possibility is, okay, we will collect both together. Someone will say, the sec second possibility is, okay, we, ha we, we have the idea, let's have the idea of the disease and we'll collect only exposure. Or you have the idea of the exposure, you will collect the disease in future because disease will develop. So this is only three possibility. And depending on this three possibility, the analytical study design is further subclassified into the three section. The first one is the cross sectional. It means both the information for the disease and for the exposure information, you are going to collect at the same time. Okay. Normally, in M scenario, we are doing the cross-sectional study, especially the retrospective. Okay, you go and uh, from the files, you collect all the information or any patient you are coming to the OPD, you just collect all the information in one time. Okay, that is all our cross-sectional study design. Not you are going to follow up them or not you are having any prior information and asking about the history something. So that all are cross-sectional studies, one-time enumeration. We call it one-time enumeration. Both the information for the disease exposure, we collect at the same time. Okay. But in second scenario, no, no, you have, if you have the idea of disease, <clears throat> for example, you know that these many group of people are with cancer and these many group of people are without cancer, then is some exposure is responsible for that. So you again collect the information you contact the patient and ask about their history of that exposure like tobacco or any other thing okay because history can only influence the disease no so is there using tobacco in history previously and because of that the cancer developed so now you have the idea about the disease and you are collecting the information for the exposure Okay, history of exposure. This is called case control design. By name also it's clear, case control. You have the idea of the case and control and you collect the information for the exposure. Okay. Now, the third option is you have the idea about the exposure. But we know that this group of people are using tobacco. This group of people are not using tobacco. And then we'll see, is the disease more developed in the group who is using tobacco? Okay. So you follow up them, long-term follow-up. And we'll see when the disease is developed and how many diseases develop in which group. And then we will compare that. That is called cohort study design. Okay. There is a cohort study center in it. So basically what we are doing there, we have the idea of the exposure, whatever the exposure they are using, and that collect the information for the long term, five year, 10 year, 15 year, and see when the disease develop. And then we'll compare, okay, the disease developed more in the exposed group or non-exposed group. So that is called cohort study design. Okay, clear? Because there is a possibility that one question will come from the observational study and one from the experimental study. So this is all about the this is all about the observational study design. There is four possibility basically. It's descriptive, 
इट्स डिस्क्रिप्टिव स्टडी और क्रॉस सेक्शनल स्टडी और केस कंट्रोल स्टडी और कोहॉट स्टडी ओके नाउ द सेकेंड पॉसिबिलिटी इज नो नो आई हैव सम इंटरवेंशन एंड आई वॉन्ट टू सी द इफेक्ट ऑफ दैट इंटरवेंशन so if you want to see the effect of some intervention it means that there must be some comparative group so experimental study design is always analytical study design because you want to see the effect of something okay so without reference it is not possible so if you want to see the effect of some intervention then the second question is means you have two groups the one group is going to receive the intervention and one group is going to receive another intervention or placebo so in that case how you are going to choose the participant for this two group that become very important and why it become very important because if you are going to see the effect of some intervention it means that you have the prior information about the intervention like i develop a covid vaccine okay and i know that where it is more effective and if this is my task to choose the participant for the uh, the those who are going to receive this intervention my intervention or the another intervention then i know okay it's young okay give my intervention and then it's very old oh it's had so many comorbidities okay placebo at the end it become like okay this intervention is very 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 good but that is false because i am biased in selecting the patient so that's why there are different procedure to adopt the experimental design okay so the question is you randomly choose and this information become very important that you randomly choose or not so if you are not choosing the randomly then your result is accordingly considered okay so if you are not choosing randomly and if you are choosing randomly depending on that your experimental study is randomized control trial or non randomized control trial okay and if it is the randomized control trial so this randomized control trial is basically the top study design if you if you if you plot the hierarchy okay this is also one question possible okay which study design is above than which one so if you will plot the hierarchy then cross sectional case control study design from the lower i am moving from the lower to upper okay cross sectional case control cohort randomized control trial and randomized control trial above that is the meta analysis but in meta analysis we are not directly involved with the patients okay so it's the analysis of the available studies so where we directly involved with the patient the top most study design is the randomized control so it become very important huh? and the reason behind that is there are so many steps involved to improve the quality of this randomized control trial okay and the same way like i said okay uh, how to choose the participant that will improve your result okay now if you are saying okay you randomly allocate but the random list is in front of you like i have the random list the first patient is going to see the uh, uh, receive the treatment a second patient is going to receive the treatment b third patient is going to receive the treatment c uh, a from ab so again a so if i know that the third patient i'm i'm selecting the second patient i know that the third patient is going to receive this one again i am able to switch that okay the second patient you receive the third one and second will receive the uh, second one third one okay we switch the second and third up because i know that what is the third again there is a possibility yeah.